Since it's too computationally demanding to enforce having this quantity on the left here equal to zero everywhere in space, what we can do instead is have this quantity on the left equal to zero in what's called a weighted sense across each element of the grid. Let's take a closer look at this. For FEM, we will discretize space into finite elements. For now, let's say we'll divide the one-dimensional space we are considering into elements that are all the same size. So let's divide this up. As for FDTD, it turns out for FEM that we should use about 10 to 20 elements per wavelength. For the finite element method, there are what are called nodal elements. That's what I've drawn here. There's also vector elements. For one-dimensional nodal elements, we would solve for the unknown at the endpoints of each element. So here, these are all endpoints. So this is element number one. Here's element two, element three. And these are the two endpoints of each of those. Nodal elements are helpful when we can treat the unknown values we are solving as scalar values. In our case, for the one-dimensional plane wave propagation, we already know that the electric field we are solving for is oriented in the z direction. So we can get away with using nodal elements. And we're just going to solve for the steady state ez value at each node. So at each of these nodes, we can solve for the magnitude and the phase. So these nodes right here, we're solve for the magnet. We can solve for the magnitude and the phase of the electric field, which we know is oriented in the z direction. Let's consider just one generic element in our grid, which we'll call element E. This element has two nodes, one on each side, which we'll label as node 1 and node 2. Each of these nodes is positioned in space somewhere along the x-axis. So we'll call the spatial position of node 1 of element E, we'll give this a spatial position x uh, at element E and node 1. So the subscript denotes the node number for the element, this right here and the superscript denotes the element number. I'm writing ELEM for element because later on we'll use a variable called E, so I don't want to shorten element to E in our equations for when we describe the x position of the node. So this for the second node we'll have x2 corresponding to element E. We want to solve the Helmholtz equation for EZ across this generic element in the grid. But it's too demanding to enforce that this equation equals zero everywhere, so what we'll do is we'll multiply this equation by a weighting function, w, and this inside here, the second partial spatial derivative, beta squared ez, this goes in this brackets, we'll multiply it by the weighting function w, and then we're going to integrate across the element, whatever element we might be dealing with. So from node 1, which is x1 of element E, to x2, uh, the second node of element E. We're going to integrate across x, and we want this to be equal to 0. So what this means is that in a weighted sense, across the entire element, we are going to enforce that this is equal to 0. So in a weighted sense. This is equal to zero. What we're going to do is solve this equation at each node of each element. Then what we'll end up with is a system of equations corresponding to each node of the grid, and we'll solve this system of equations simultaneously to obtain a solution for EZ at each node of the grid. So considering this generic element, 
For the first note of this element, we will use a specific weighting function specifically designed for the first node of each element, which we'll call w1. So we're going to use w1 here at, for node 1 and w2 at node 2. So as a result, for the equation at the first node of each element, we'll evaluate an equation of the form where we integrate from x1 over the element to x2 of the element. We'll take w1 times what's in the brackets, integrate over x. We're going to set this equal to 0. So this is for node 1 of element e, any of the elements. Analogously, for the second node of each element, we will use a specific weighting function specifically designed for the second node of each element, which we'll call w2. So, and we're going to integrate over the element again, the same element, x1e to x2, uh, w2 times what's in this brackets here, integrate over x. So this is for node 2. We want this equal to 0 in a weighted sense as well. Now we have two equations to solve for the unknown, to solve for EZ at nodes 1 and 2 of our generic element E. And what we will do is apply the same methodology to all of the elements of the grid, which will give us two equations for each element in the grid. Now if we apply these two equations to each element across the grid, you might notice that the limits of the integral will change for every element in the grid. For example, for the equations corresponding to nodes 1 and 2 of element 1, this one right here, we will have to integrate from x1, 1, 1 to x2, 1, where the subscript here is the node number and the superscript is the element number. And for the two equations, when we apply these two equations to element 2, we will have to integrate from x1, 2 to x2, 2, 2, and so forth. This means we have to reevaluate the integral in these two equations for each, every single element, and this is tedious and time consuming to have to reevaluate the integral for every single element. Can you maybe think of something we can do to avoid having to reevaluate the same type of integration integral for each of these elements? Specifically, is there something we can do so that we only have to solve this integral once? And have our solution to that one integral apply to any element in the grid?